coming up with this fabulous presentation now. I'm going to take us over to the room. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks, Jason, for the energy you bring to this every single session. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Hang on, everybody. Vicky slides are this coming This is up. absolutely amazing. Isn't it great? It's just fabulous. I love that us. song. It's great. Thank, Thank you. We're you gonna, so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us. We're going to get out of your way, and we'll be in the background if you need us. So have a great session. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Have fun, everybody. So great to see you, Vicki. Nice to see you, too, Jason and Chuck and Stephen and Barb and everybody in the room. Thank you very much. What a beautiful song that was. So moving and so full of power and so motivating. And... Um, it mentioned in the beginning, in the lyric, in the first lyric, um, I still can't speak, <laughs> I'm sorry, that we're little boats on the ocean. And sometimes, as little boats, we feel that we're all alone in that big ocean of education or the country we're in. Um, that's how I felt a few years ago. I don't feel like that anymore. I'm still a little boat. But there are lots and lots of little boats around me, and I'm very grateful. <laughs> okay, so let's start before we have an accident and I start crying again. Um, well, this presentation um, was uh, initially intended for Greece. I've changed it a little bit. Ooh, little beautiful bells. It's absolutely a fleet, and I'm very part, of, very happy to be part of that fleet. So this talk that I'm going to do today, it's nothing new, and I'm not sure if we're going to learn something. I think it just serves as a reminder, a reminder that we're all those little boats in the ocean, and what we're doing, and what we're doing to and with each other. Um, like Jason says, and Julie, and Mark, it's a f whole fleet, and... Um, I prepared this talk much differently though for Greece last year uh, for a conference in Greece and uh, they asked me if it could be related to the financial situation that's going on in Greece right now and um, it's not a pretty situation at all. It's happening almost all over Europe and it's spreading to the rest of the world. Um, it's not pleasant for anybody, it's a bit scary. but. There's a lot of good stuff coming out of it. How can good stuff come out of a crisis you're going to ask? Are you serious? Yeah, you're speaking from your safety there in Switzerland. Well, no place is safe today. It's an unsure world that we're living in, no matter where we are. And um, the crisis has reached here too, believe it or not. Um, so I prepared this for Greece last year, but I thought, hey, this could be the whole world right now. That's why I have all this imagery of the sea, because Greece is such a beautiful country. If you've never visited it, I would recommend you do, because it's absolutely gorgeous. You can see the sea everywhere. It's The water has a unique color. I could go on and on and on about the beaches and the people and everything. Like every country in the world, it's beautiful, and that's why I've chosen the imagery of the sea. Because we are little boats, as the song um, mentioned, and sometimes we feel like we're drowning, that we don't even have the boat, we don't even have a life jacket. Uh, I've felt like that. A lot of teachers I speak to have felt like that. Let's see what's happening in the world. Well, 2009 was not a good year. It was the year that everything started tumbling down. Uh, it hit Europe really badly, and ever since, it's been affecting other countries as well. Um, as you can see from Wikipedia, I'll just go through it very quickly. From late 2009, fears of a sovereign default developed among investors as a result of the rising private and government debt levels around the world, together with a wave of downgrading of government debt in some European states. Causes of the crisis varied by country. That was the year I moved to Switzerland, 2009. I thought it was going to be one of the best of my life. It turned out to be one of the worst. Uh, why, you're going to ask me. Um, I had a lot of dreams then, and I had already found a job before I came here. Mm. 
you know, through Skype interviews, a lot of uh, schools uh, do that. So I was really happy. I was coming over here, uh, ready to find a house and do all the things that teachers do once they have a job. But when I arrived here, I was very unlucky because it was right when the crisis was breaking out. And um, the school that told me they were going to hire me told me, sorry, we can't do that because we're not being affected directly by the crisis, but we're afraid and we have to be proactive. So we're not going to hire you. So there I was suddenly unemployed for the first time in my life. Uh, and I knew a lot of teachers at that period who were unemployed either in Greece or here. And um, actually, I found out about them a bit later. In the beginning, I thought, this is only me. This is only happening to me. Why is this happening? And so on and so forth. Uh, I was unemployed for a year and underemployed for a year and a half. It was a very hard period, but through that hard period, I got a lot of positive stuff. Um, one of the worst things a person can do to me when I'm not feeling well is tell me, come on, Vicky, think positive. Because at that moment, I don't want to think positive. I'm just thinking of what's happening. So I couldn't think positive. What I did was I started looking uh, online. Um, and I found a lot of teachers online. And that's how... I got motivation and encouragement and I started connecting to schools and slowly, slowly, very, very slowly, I started finding a little bit of work and then a little bit more and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. That's why I think that we can find uh, good stuff out of bad stuff. And there are a lot of teachers right now in the chat room that I see that have been through even worse situations and it hasn't gotten them down. And that's for them and that's for all of you and that's for all of us who have been in such a situation, crisis or no crisis, we're going to look into it a little bit because all these people, no exaggeration, almost all of the people who are in the chat box right now have had some effect on me or another. And I am so grateful. I learned how to blog. I learned how to reflect from them. I learned how to become a better teacher and I'm learning every single day. I make tons of mistakes, but that's the beauty of it in our profession. We learn every single day and we can say, okay, I'll fix that. We don't feel well with the mistakes that we make, but we can fix them. So I've expanded a little bit there. What happened to education and what happens in education when there's not a good situation? First of all, and this experience is from Greece and from other countries that I visited, schools cannot be maintained properly anymore. They start literally falling apart. I was talking to kids and they were telling me that parts of the ceiling were unsticking and falling on their desks, which is not a pleasant situation and it's not safe at all. So if there's no money in the bank of the government, there's no money for schools, of course. Uh, schools could not be maintained. They couldn't buy any more computers. They couldn't buy books. They cannot still um, have heating or um, basic things like water running and things like that. Thanks very much, Julie. It's the water images of Greece that I have in my slides. So one of the things that happened and happens is that schools cannot be maintained properly anymore. Uh, there's no money to pay teachers even. They are being fired one by one. So here it is. Teachers lost their jobs in the crisis and they keep losing them, unfortunately. Uh, or they had to face reductions in their schedule and in their salaries. Uh, some teachers I've been speaking to have had their uh, salaries cut down three times than what they used to have. Even so, I am in awe of them because they still put their hands in their own pockets in that one third that they have of their salary and they keep paying for their classrooms. They buy colorful paper, uh, glue, scissors, uh, beautiful things for the kids to make, even books for them, pencils um uh, rubbers erasers anything that they need for the classroom if these teachers are my heroes are our heroes um unfortunately uh even if we're not talking directly in front of the kids about the crisis and the students they watch the news they pick up on conversations and it's not a good thing i still have 
uh, contact with my kids that are used to teaching Greece. Most of them are three heads taller than I am right now, and they're very big, and they are still fighting uh, to get out of that situation, and they're my heroes too. But little kids and teenagers who are now, you know, they're growing in this uh, situation, they're realizing what's happening, and it's having, it's taking a toll on their dreams, on their aspirations. Uh, in the summertime, I was in Greece because that's where my parents live. It's my parents' homeland. Um, I spoke to a few of my kids and I was very upset because they were disappointed. And they told me, you know what? I don't feel like fighting anymore. I have nothing to fight for. And they're right because if you hear all the time that there are no jobs, that there's no way out of it apart from immigrating or... Um, employers uh, take you on and they are not willing to pay for your insurance or what have you or half the salary they don't want to do it anymore and they're trying to think of alternative ways and I said okay but what can you learn from this it can be disheartening yeah Hannah you should have seen their faces it just broke my heart we still have contact and I tell them there are little big heroes what they're doing right now gives us strength and motivation too because they might feel upset, but they're not giving up completely. It has affected their performance. It has affected their dreams. Uh, it has made them change uh, their career paths, maybe. But I tell them, hey, it can't go on forever. And if we give up on this, um, then it will never be solved. The solution is not giving up. The solution is not running away from it. Um, the solution is keeping up and fighting for it. Um, I was actually thinking of giving up when I was unemployed here for a year and a half. Uh, I thought many times of giving up, but it's all you out there who kept me going. And uh, either little messages or um, a blog post that I read, and I thought, hey, I can't give up. Yeah, it's difficult. I don't have any money right now, but it can't be like this forever. That's what I kept told, telling myself. It can't be like this forever, and I can change my situation which happens slowly, but it does happen. It does happen. I'm not looking uh, towards the world with rose-colored glasses, rose-tinted glasses. I know what the problem is. I live with it every day because my parents live in the country which has been stricken. I, uh, I speak to teachers uh, all the time. I've been in this situation, so I, I think that it can happen slowly, but we can get out of it. No matter what that is, financial difficulty or difficulties in our school, it never lasts forever. That's what I keep telling myself. What else happened to education? What else is happening? There are feelings of frustration and disillusionment, like I mentioned earlier, not only with the students, but with the teachers as well. They feel like giving up to um, you feel like you have nothing more to fight for. Um, you feel that all the work you're doing is going nowhere. You feel like you're running up against the wall. Um, I hear teachers saying, for example, I have brilliant ideas. I want to do this and that and that. And then suddenly I think I have no money. I have no way of doing it slowly and steadily it can happen um there are people who also um uh, give money of their own to help schools i was in a school last year in greece and the lady came in she was not she didn't have one of her kids there and she stepped, walked into the teacher's room and she said uh, i brought a whole bag full of school supplies i don't have any kids in this school even that bag of supplies i'm sure it was a huge help for that school so Everybody can help. Um, it can it can be solved little by little, but it can be. Uh, there's no more support from the government, and then it transfers to the school as well. If the government doesn't work properly, then the schools don't work properly as well, and we can see that in situations all around the world. Uh, I was in uh, Turkey many times, and uh, one of my best friends. Uh, Din Sher Demir is a teacher there and he has had up to 55 kids in the classroom due to budget costs and he did brilliant things with them 55 the most I've had were 36 
and 55 he just works magic with them exactly mark it's the goodwill of the community that can help too slowly but steadily and itdi is a marvelous organization that can help teachers so far and wide tell everybody about itdi i do too i'm very happy to be part of it uh from the very beginning and uh, i'm happy to keep going with it and I, I i get so much from it i've written blog posts because of itdi i've gotten motivation whenever i feel down i've seen something and it just uplifts me it gives me strength because that's what we need first of all to get out of that situation we need strength ourselves what are teachers doing um this photograph is from a, the classroom I was telling you about earlier. Uh, it's a marvelous teacher. She is in the center of Greece, in the city called Larissa, another beautiful city in Greece. Um, and what Theodora does, and she has allowed me to share her photos of her classroom with you, and the fact that she gets almost no support from anybody. Any money she spends on her classroom is completely her own. Uh, the kids are enchanted by her and she's enchanted by them. It's absolutely amazing. I spent four hours in that classroom and no exaggeration, I was powered up for the rest of the year. I was just thinking about them all the time. Um, they do marvelous things. In this photograph, you can see that they're doing a little theatrical play. All the props, have been made by them. They've brought them from home. They haven't paid a single uh, cent. So look what they're doing. The kids are responding. They're learning English at the same time. And nobody notices that there's no support from the government. It's not stopping them, which is absolutely amazing. I was in awe. Exactly, Hannah. Theodora, who is in the chat room right now, she's another example of a teacher in Greece. Uh, doing things uh, all at her own cost, uh, at her own time, absolutely amazing. And a lot of teachers in this chat room, I'm just mentioning a few, I'm not being very fair actually. So going back to Aphrodite's classroom, did Aphrodite and other teachers like her give up? Do, do, the, did she give up? Do they give up these teachers? No, they don't give up. It can be disheartening, I agree, but giving up is not the solution. Do we have to adjust to a new situation? Unfortunately, yes. Uh, it's a new situation. We have to find ways of getting out of it. And here's one. Props from home. The kids bring clothes, sunglasses, hats. They build the little props uh, by themselves. They also learn how to create theatrical props. And um, Aphrodite and her kids are so enthusiastic, uh, like Julie mentions right now. Julie, we're thinking the same thing. And she's doing marvelous things, and the kids are learning, and the kids are having a great time. Here is another um, project of Aphrodite's um, that she's doing. Um, she's collaborating with schools all around the world, in Hungary, in uh, Taiwan, in France, schools that also have very low budgets. Um, what do these, these teachers do? Did they give up again? No. They decided to teach each other's classes about each other's countries. So Aphrodite, this example from Aphrodite's classroom is um, a project she's doing with uh, Annie Tsai, who's a marvelous teacher uh, in Taiwan. What they do is they um, speak to each other and they say, okay, what shall we do now? Shall we talk about sports in our countries? And they agree on a topic. And then they have the kids do projects. For example, they make little drawings or they talk about the Olympic Games in the Greek situation, for example. Or um, Annie and her kids talk about which sports are popular in Taiwan. Um, so they send each other these big packages in big envelopes with bubbles in them. And they make little crafts, little drawings they exchange these uh, envelopes and like i said earlier they pay for it on their own these two teachers that i know pay for it on their own they have no support unfortunately from their schools because their schools can't support them so they put their own hands in their own pockets 
they send these huge packages which cost a lot to send overseas but still the things that they get out of this project are amazing the kids have learned so so many things um uh, from each other and they are exposed to each other's cultures without even uh, traveling without even moving and they're uh, they become more open-minded it's so many things that's happening there they're learning English they're learning about culture they're learning about other people they're becoming more open-minded and tolerant to other cultures it's absolutely amazing it's just um, a small ripple like Shelley Terrell says in her blog and in her talks very often that spreads and becomes a wave that's why the title of my talk was that we're not only trying to stay afloat because this is a sea that's trying to drown us all of these problems we're also making waves uh chuck has posted a fantastic link i'm gonna go and watch that earlier and so should you raja is a teacher in tunisia there's so many teachers all around the world that's why i always say connect connect online it's absolutely amazing uh what's happening with classrooms uh, all around the world so you can find these teachers um, like I said these uh, schools are on a tighter budget they're making do with what they have and what the community offers with the even the parents of the children uh, bring in stuff it's absolutely amazing they either give money or they bring in supplies it's absolutely amazing and this is giving rise to a new phenomenon uh it's giving rise to what has always been an amazing generation of teachers it's showing us um not only what they can do in good situations but what they can do in bad situations as well and it can give us all ideas and it can give us all encouragement and um motivation and strength i love what jason just wrote in the chat box connect and respect our intellects intersect absolutely absolutely that's why i tell everybody connect online even if it's one tool or two or three just connect on one and you will see brilliant things happening i would never have learned about itdi if i hadn't connected online absolutely barb yeah the obstacles are just there and they just go around them it's absolutely amazing um, these two are just examples from Greece, but um, uh, there are other examples from other countries too. I know that this same thing happens there too. Um, there are teachers who in their free time offer lessons free of charge to kids that cannot pay for uh, private schools, to go to private language schools. Uh, one of them is called Kino Niko for this theater. It's called, it's um, like a um, community private school that uh, they post their information on the internet how many teachers are teaching and the kids can choose schools I know that this happens in other countries too that uh, teachers are offering their services free of charge and if any of you in the chat room are involved in one of these projects or you know something like this happening in your country please write it in the chat box and there's also tutor pool uh, in Greece they have a um, a hashtag on Twitter and you can find their classes there are so many projects around the world going on free of charge for the kids to learn and it's absolutely amazing that teachers even those that have families and you know families demand a lot of their time they offer their services to these people absolutely Aya from Tunisia it gives the children hope that there's possibility out there that somebody cares for them absolutely one of my cousins in Canada, and I have a lot of cousins coming from a Greek family, <laughs> um, she is absolutely amazing. I'm not saying it because she's my cousin. She's an educator. She's a principal in a school in Ontario, and she's absolutely amazing because um, her school has a lot of kids that come from households with a low income, a very low income. Some of them come to school without lunch or without having breakfast and what Kathy has done that's her name um, is that she has organized a breakfast club at her school and um, actually this is a project that uh, Kathy's not a part of this one but this here that you can see on this slide is a project 
in Canada, the Breakfast Club of Canada, which offers uh, food to all the kids of um, low-income households. Um, oh, thank you, Julie. I'll check that out later. Fantastic. Thank you for posting that. Look at Julie's project, everybody. PeaceJam.org. So what they're doing in Canada is they're offering the kids breakfast because if you haven't eaten, how can you concentrate on school? How can you want to do anything? So Kathy does that. She goes much earlier to school every morning. Um, and she helps feed these kids. Uh, one out of seven in Canada, as it says here on the slide, are missing out on breakfast. Some of them come without lunch or without substantial lunch. So these programs are out there to help the kids um, and the students um, fill their tummies and be more concentrated and, you know, have hope. Have hope that um, their situation can change and uh, they can do a better job and they can have dreams too, like everybody. It's not their fault. It's not their family's fault. It's just that um, they have been unlucky to be in this situation and it's up to teachers and the community to get them out of it. Oh, that's fantastic. Theodora mentions the bakery near her son's school. Theodora has a marvelous son. I've met him, Yanni. It offers free breakfast for kids in need. That's amazing. It can be a very small uh, enterprise like a bakery. It can be a huge organization like the Breakfast Club of Canada. Everybody can make a change in the lives of these kids. And I know teachers who bring food in their bags too. Um for um for the, for their students exactly what barb says these are unsung heroes and it's time to sing their praises absolutely amazing what's happening we don't give up we're a huge community of teachers all over the world doing our best oh that's great brian also has breakfast clubs and schools in the uk that's amazing it's absolutely amazing no matter where we look this, there's somebody or some people trying to solve uh, that problem, to give solutions. What else is happening? The ripple that Shelley Terrell um, mentions in her talks, and um, I'm borrowing for mine as well, uh, the ripple that teachers have created is moving and it's spreading, and people are helping each other. Um, if you don't follow Shelly Terrell, which I don't think there's a teacher in the world that doesn't know her, please do. She's absolutely amazing. That's great, Haifa. Wonderful. Another ripple. Haifa's school prepares bazaars where they prepare homemade food for the kids. There are parents helping other parents. I hear about parents in the U.S. or in Greece. And they're uh, setting up carpooling projects because gas has gone up too and they can't pay for it. So they arrange one week, one parent takes the kids to school. The next week, other uh, parents uh, take them to school or they give each other a little bit of money for the gas to keep the cars moving and the kids getting to school. It's absolutely amazing how parents help other parents or they have homework clubs at home. I was hearing in Greece. Uh, this summer that some parents are organizing homework clubs at their home and um, it's absolutely amazing students helping other students um here in switzerland i know kids that go to um other kids homes uh with low incomes and they tutor them it's amazing everybody's helping each other it's absolutely amazing what's what's going on um Another thing I, I've mentioned already, and I'll keep mentioning it as long as I am alive, is um, teachers and social media. I know that technology is not readily available in all countries or in all schools, and sometimes the internet goes down and it's not easy. But in that time that the internet is working, please find the opportunity to connect to other teachers on social media uh, for example, I used to be on all of them. I'm not on Facebook anymore because I had to choose one that had to go, but I'm still on Twitter. I'm still on Google. 
And that's how I got out of my terrible situation in the beginning here. I've mentioned it in all my talks. I'll be very quick with this uh, story. I'll miss you too, but I'll still be on all other uh, social media. I always mention this story because um, you can be a hero to somebody and not even know it. Uh, my first hero here was Ken Wilson because when I had my unemployment troubles, um, I was Googling online to find something to read about ELT and I found his blog and then I found Ken and Ken was so generous with his time and he told me what to do and he said connect on Twitter. It was very popular then in 2009. It still is, but some people choose to use Facebook more or Twitter more. It depends. And then from Ken, I found other teachers online like Shelly, like Chuck, like Jason, Silvora, Maria. It's a chain. It's a tree that keeps spreading its branches. I couldn't believe it in the beginning. I was thinking, what on earth is social media going to offer me? I don't have a job. Is it going to offer me lunch on my table? It's not like that. It's not going to give you money. It didn't give me money either. It just gave me strength and motivation and ideas. Uh, what to do, how to look for jobs more effectively, because there were things I wasn't doing correctly. Uh, I started my blog. I learned from other teachers, too, that they were in the same situation as I am before or at the time I was unemployed as well. And I wasn't alone anymore. That was the, the biggest profit for me, the biggest benefit I got. I wasn't alone anymore. I didn't feel alone. I didn't feel that much devastated anymore. I had people encouraging me and motivating me and helping me out, telling me tips, how to look for jobs, because I hadn't been unemployed up to then. I didn't know what being unemployed was, but it helped me a lot. It was a very difficult situation. It was probably the worst time of my life, but I got so much out of it. And um, connect on any social media. It doesn't have to be all of it. You don't have to spend countless hours on it. It can just be really literally five minutes every morning while you're drinking your coffee. It happens to me that I'm in a rush and I just uh, switch on Twitter, for example, or a blog and I bookmark it. And then when I come home late in the evening, I can read it and I can learn. I, sometimes it happens that I'm on it for two hours. I think, whoa, where did that time go? But in those two hours, I kid you not, I've learned amazing things. I've learned so many things. From it, And this year, uh, actually last year, I started a master's. I started doing a master's. And a lot of the things I was seeing in my master's, I had learned from social media, from articles that other pe people were posting or from blog posts that other people were posting. It's my school, social media and the teachers, all of you out there, you're my school. And I'm so grateful for everything you teach me and you keep teaching me. That's why I say connect, connect, connect. It doesn't have to be all of them. It doesn't have to be countless hours. It can be 10 minutes. There are teachers all over the world, no matter if they have internet the whole day or for three hours, they join social media every day. They join the chats. They connect to other educators. They collaborate with teachers and students across the world. Like I told you the example of Afroditi with Annie earlier. Greece and Taiwan, what are the chances of them coming together in person? Very few, maybe. I hope they meet someday. But even if they don't, it's like they know each other already. And nothing, nothing, not financial difficulties, not the distance, has made has become an obstacle for them. It's absolutely amazing what's happening. It can be, Brian, yep, and Mark. Connecting on social media, it brings us out of every uh, bad situation we're in. It could be personal, a personal problem we're having. It happens to me too. And sometimes I just go online, I see uh, a tweet that Jason, for example, has posted. And he's so enthusiastic. Please follow him if you aren't. Uh, and it just makes my whole day. And then everything is gone. It just vanishes. Um, we built communities online. I like ELT chat. It's an amazing community on Facebook and on Twitter. Teachers from all over the world are following chats every Wednesday. You can find it. That's just an example. And there are new professional opportunities. You can find a job through social media. I know a lot of teachers who tell me, you know what? I went to this 
um, I wrote, for example, um, that I was unemployed and somebody offered me a job or I went to a conference that I had seen online and I found a job or I went to a job posting group and I found a job. It's absolutely, it can happen. It can happen. It's absolutely amazing. That's why I say connect, 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 and it can really, really help. Um, these are my contact details. Uh, it's my email address, my Twitter handle. I'm also on Skype and I have a blog. I want to keep connected with anybody that would like to. So let's connect and uh, don't hesitate to connect with me. I'd love to be uh, connected to you too. You see how many times I've said the word connect in the past 10 minutes. It's absolutely amazing. It's magical what's happening. Um, I can learn from you. I can learn with you. And... I would be so grateful for that. Uh, thank you so much. ITDI was there for me in those difficult first two years. Uh, I'm so happy to be part of it. Uh, it gives me so much motivation. It helps me so much. ITDI are my heroes and they were there from the beginning too. And I'm so, so grateful for everything, everyone I've met so far, everybody I'm going to meet, everything I learn from each and every one of you. I truly mean it. You are my uh, teachers. I'd like to thank you for that. And your students are my teachers. And um, I don't know what to say apart from a huge thank you in all your languages. A huge thank you to everybody. Thank you very, very much. And it goes both ways, Maria. You're an inspiration for me too. I love what you write on your blog. Thank you all, Hannah. Priscilla, I love you very much. For, just follow all these amazing teachers. Uh, and that's the thing about is connection is it works both ways. Yeah. It's never one-sided. and I love what you said about, about it. it. We're not alone. We're, we're all yeah. little boys. Uh, sorry, I just... Uh, Together we're a big fleet. Yeah. I love what Vicky said about the and all the teachers I will meet, you know. And think about that before social media, how that would be so impact. Think think about the teachers I'll, I'll meet if like a new teacher starts at my school next month. <laughs> you know, like it's just a different world where we're not limited to uh, contact and, and ideas and inspiration to the people who are just in our physical space. And of course, this is great for, for people that, you know, work somewhere where they feel really isolated, but even teach, you know, I, I remember before social media, teachers being jealous yeah. of the or others who worked with a lot of teachers at a school if they didn't have that. But then I explained, you know, most of us, we don't really work together. <laughs> you know, we, we work physically in the same place, but we're not really collaborating on things so much. There's not really a lot going on. And it's just the complete opposite in social media with education. Uh, so that's it's just really exciting. What's amazing to me is, I was just going to say, it's amazing to me that all the teachers, I didn't know any of the teachers I'm working also with teachers who are... three or four years ago. Oh, sorry. I just met so many mm. fabulous people. Well, the icing on the cake is when you can meet people in person that you've had these connections with in social media. It's amazing. Yeah. And that's happening more and more for me. I'm really grateful it's amazing, for that. Yeah. yeah. Jason, come on. That's Let's what see I was your, gonna... your lovely face. I'm coming. I'm coming, brother. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I just want to say uh, one more thing, and not to get into a big speech about tech and stuff, and I'm not into tech for tech's sake, but, you know, when you consider what we're doing here, how more, more fluid it is to be talking on camera, just imagine in the years coming. Uh, how much more uh, real it's going to feel, not just feel, but actually be. Uh, to to connect with people around the world, students and teachers. So. Mm -hmm.
Very exciting. It is Wonderful great. presentation, Vicky. Thank you. Vicky. Oh, it's an inspiration. Yep. Thank you so much. Like I said, it wasn't anything new, but it's a reminder that we're not alone and that we can always learn um, I think uh, even through it's, difficult it's situations. Difficult it can situations be disheartening. Really it, can be so discouraging. it can be so discouraging. You just want to give up and not do anything. But, that people, but of course, at that point, the last thing you feel is that it could be yeah. this great experience, but then it, it can be afterwards. But the key is not losing it completely, and that's what Vicky's talking about. With and it's, it's connections. Having inspiration and help, you know. It's these connections we make with each other that keep us, keep us going through the difficult situations, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why we thought... No, 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 no. Yeah. you go ahead. This is your time. That day, for go example, ahead. when I found... Oh, sorry, I interrupted you again. I'm sorry. Um, that day that I found Ken, for example, and then I found a gazillion <laughs> other teachers through Ken, I even thought, I don't want to be a teacher anymore. It seriously went through my head, and... Um, I, that moment, I just, you know that thing that I say, snap out of it. I snapped out of it, and I said, what do you like the most in your life? ELT, and that's how I Googled. I just Googled ELT stuff, and Ken came on, and a, a, a billion other mm. amazing people came along. And then I thought, my God, what was I about to do? Yeah. But so I learned a lot. Too, that, it that wasn't easy after that either, but I learned a lot, and I keep learning. Education of all is working together. You get really famous people like, like Ken, for example, mm -hmm. willing to willing to help and anybody. All you need to do is ask and reach out and, and talk to people.